So I say decimal places are bad practice. Why are decimal places bad practice? Yeah. So this is just me messing around in a PowerPoint. <clears throat> so imagine I have this number. I've got that number. So what is that to three decimal places? Or even four decimal places? What is it? So I put in my four decimal places. What is it? What should I do? Yeah, exactly. It's zero. Point zero zero zero. Now, what is it to four significant figures? Five, six, four times ten. E to the minus what? So that's the minus one, that's the minus two. That's the minus three, that's the minus four, so the next one's the minus five. Yeah. So. Which one of those two is better to use? Four decimal places or four significant figures? Yes, you could write it to four significant figures, and that is to four significant figures. But you, by using scientific notation, this notation it makes it a lot easier to see why it's four significant figures. Because you convert can convert any number into this. So if I have that number, and I want to write in four significant figures. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So again, that's it to four significant figures. So the scientific notation is a very useful thing to use. The problem is that I can't figure out how you're supposed to put answers into uh, Blackboard using that scientific notation, because it doesn't seem to work. And so unfortunately, we have to type it like this so two five three oh then one two three <sighs> which was four now there is a special problem if you have a number like this So if I have that number and I round it to, oh, oops. What should I round that to as four significant figures?
So we'll start with the first one. We can all agree what the first one's going to be. It's going to be 3.21. So you're going for three. Why are you going for three? I'm saying it's going to be two. But this one. Right, why is that true? So in this case, I rounded down. In this case, I rounded up. What's happening? So when you get a final five and there's no other digits, to distinguish, you go to the nearest even number. So you always round to even. Only in this specific case. That said 5, 1. Then you'd round it up and it would be 3.513. It's only if it's 5 and 0. In that last digit. Right. This is just done for computational reasons. In the old days, when you were dealing with very small uh, numbers, you'd always round up or round down, and you just specify it, and so it's usually round up. When you're dealing with millions and millions and millions of numbers, it starts to lead to your averages increasing very slightly because you're always rounding everything up. So you needed a way of sometimes rounding up and sometimes rounding down. So they always go to the odd number. Problem is that one of the examples that you've got in your test, it does it the wrong way and goes to an odd number instead of an even number. And I don't know why, because R should not have that mistake in it. Because all of your assessments are actually done in R, not in SPSS. I wrote the scripts in something else. Anyway. That's about rounding. Uh, maybe I shall save and significant figures. So I'll save this. Oops. Just for the sake of it. Oh. Right. So when you get here, SPSS has just given you a few little numbers. If I double click on this, it shows me the numbers. It shows me the table that I can zoom in a bit more. If I double click on it again, it shows me what the actual number is. So this is 0.000332. So all of those examples where you've got multiple choice and you've got something times 10 to the minus whatever in your p values, it's because you need to click on these boxes and see what the number actually is. Because SPSS is only showing you this number of decimal places. 